I can make you a painting. A painting? Yeah. No, just tell me where you get your hair done. That's what I want to know. All right. So um, we'll review that uh, quiz on Wednesday. And some of us have not posted their quiz work yet. I would advise you to get that done as ASAP as possible. Now let's go to our week number 14 file folder. And there's that cash flow explain video that I just talked about on YouTube. There it is right there. You can just punch that up and watch it in there. But also here is a Excel spreadsheet under class notes. I'm gonna be going over this today and Wednesday. It's a sample of how to put together and what is a statement of cash flow. If you might wanna download that to your desktop and follow along with me if you'd like during the course of the day or Wednesday, it's an example of the statement of cash flow. We're also gonna be using this file next week when we talk about financial statement analysis. Certain ratios and percentages about what financial statements tell us about a company, that's chapter 15, your final chapter before, uh, chapter 14, excuse me, your final chapter before the examination. So under class notes, week 14 of your Blackboard, download if you'd like, or use this as a study guide, week 14 statement of cash flow spreadsheet. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. Okay. All right. Now, what is the statement of cash flow? Let me bring this up. I have a chat question. Oh. <laughs> How much? No, no money will transfer transfer hands. Uh, the only mo money I want to take money from is from Palm. That's the only money I want. I want his money. And everybody else, you, no good. But I'll take Palm's money. First of all, Mike Wu, are you listening? Mike Yu, are you listening? Mike? Yes, I'm listening. Mike, I, did, I, do, did my eyes deceive me? Are you a member of the Associated Students of the University of Laverne? Is that correct? Yeah. So, and who do you represent, Michael? Uh, international student senator. Okay, but can other students come to you if they want to talk, to, since you're a member of our class, now they know who you are. Mike, can they uh, come to you with any issues about being a student at Laverne? Yeah, definitely. Okay, guys, we have a Associated Students of University of Laverne uh, member in our class, Mike Yu. Mike is a good guy and he's representing you to the university. You got a beef, you got a complaint, you want some answers, Mike's the man. And it doesn't cost you a damn thing. So just remember that. Okay, Mike, I guess just gave you a little pub. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, let's bring this up now. As you can see, Professor Hassey got a good night's sleep last night and he's a little round up today. He's a couple of cups of coffee and all hell breaks loose. All right, here's Mr. Hassey's famous whiteboard, which replaces the whiteboard that we have in Landis somewhat. And I wanna go over the definition, oops. I wanna go over the definition of what statement of cash flow is. And for us, for you people as business administration majors, some of you concentrating in accounting, some of you concentrating in finance, some of you concentrating in marketing, org management. The key to running a business is one word. Without it, it ain't happening, cash. You don't have cash, all your great ideas are out the window. If you don't have cash, you can't hire. Mason, what the hell are you doing? You're running around, you're giving me a heart attack here. All right, thank you. Without cash, you can't run the business. Where does it come from and where does cash go? You gotta get a handle on that as a manager, as an accountant, as a finance person, as a HR person, a marketing person, a manufacturing person. You gotta understand where your cash goes, just like you guys today. You know, I got $3. I know where my cash is, I got three bucks. Fortunately, I'm quarantined this week, I won't have a chance to spend it anyways. But you always need to know how much cash you got and where it came from, all right? Cash can come from three areas, talked about in the textbook. 
from operations. Cash can come from the operations of the business. All right. What are operations? Profits. Depreciation. Accounts receivable. Inventory. Accounts payable. Accruals. These are all liability and asset accounts, current asset, current liability accounts. Profits, depreciation, that's the operations of a company. And we'll see that in the problem we look at in class. All right. Another area of cash flow and cash disbursements is financing. Borrowing of money. Issuing. How do you spell issuing? <laughs> issuing of stock. The paying of dividends. Financing. Either borrowing from your investors, getting cash from your investors, or paying off your investors. Cash is coming or going there. It's called financing. And the third area of cash flow in a company is investing. Investing in fixed assets. Buying equipment. Buildings. Land etc. Investing, fixed assets, and investing in investments, buying up other companies, buying pieces of other companies, putting money into a mutual fund, putting money into money market funds, investments. That's another form of investing. So the statement of cash flows tells you where your money has been received and where it went from operations, financing, borrowing, and investing. That's what chapter 13 is all about. You need to be familiar with that. Here's an example. Shoot. Exercise 13.1 of your textbook. If anybody has a textbook open, exercise 13-1 of your textbook. On page 13-45. A company has the following transactions during 2020. Indicate what we, each of these transactions, are they operations, investing, financing or non-cash activity. What are these following transactions and how do they relate to the statement of cash flow? A, we issued stock. We issued stock for cash. We issued stock for cash. That is called financing. We're financing cash flow by issuing stock. That comes under the financing head, head of the statement of cash flow. B, I'm on exercise 13.1. We purchased a machine for $30,000, giving a long-term note in exchange. Okay, we bought a machine and borrowed money. All right, two things are happening here. We borrowed money, so we got the cash from borrowing the money, and that is a form of financing. At the same time, we spent cash and invested and purchased an asset. So financing money coming in by borrowing the money, investing money or cash going out from buying the machine. A 
couple of things going on there. How is cash being received? We're borrowing. How is cash being dispersed? We're purchasing an asset. Can transaction number C, we issued $200,000 of common stock upon the conversion of bonds having a face value of $200,000. All right, we issued stock by converting bonds. In other words, we owed some money. We told those purchasers, those people who we owed the money to in the bonds, we're gonna convert that, those bonds into stock. But no cash changed hands. It's just an accounting entry. So no non-cash event. We just converted debt into equity but there's been no receipt or disbursement of cash. That's a non-cash event. It's still an accounting event, but it's a non-cash no. statement of cash no. flow event. Question? I have two sausages. Do I have two sausages, please? All right, I'd like to order a sausage if I may too. Uh, let's make sure who, <laughs> who, who is, I'd like to, whoever said that, oh, that's Seth. Seth, may I order a couple of sausages at the same time? Seth. <laughs> yes, so I like my eggs over easy with a little uh, decaf coffee too. Seth, I am now, there. Uh, see, now Seth muted, muted, and now Seth left. Seth. <laughs> no, no, I'm still here. Seth, I am now muting you. I do not care about your hunger <laughs> instincts of today. Is that correct? Yes. Adios, Seth. Seth is now muted, but we do have some sausages coming later on in the cat class. <laughs> oh, you guys crack me up. Okay. So, transaction D. Again, we're on exercise 13.1. We declare and pay a cash dividend of $18,000. Yes. That is a form of financing. That's a financing operation, financing event and the statement of cash flow. Why? We're paying back our investors in the form of a dividend. That is called financing. Transaction E. Sold a long-term investment with a cost of $15,000 for $15,000 cash. Yes? That is called an investment. We're cashing in an investment. We had a, a, a long-term investment, might've been stock, might've been something, and now we're cashing it in, we're liquefying it. So that is cash coming in in a form of an investment. We're cashing out an investment. Notice there's no gain, but we're still receiving the cash of $15,000. Transaction F collected $16,000 from the sale of good. That is called sales. That is called operations. All right, the net effect of sales and expenses is called profit, hopefully. That is part of the operations of a company, the actual day-to-day -day activity of the business. Transaction G and the last one. We paid $18,000 to our suppliers. In other words, we're purchasing goods and services and that is considered operations. It's inventory, probably, inventory. It's the purchase of inventory and the paying of inventory, that's cash going out, that's a form of operations. Every transaction occurs with a company, most of the time it affects operations, financing, and the investment side of the business. We need to understand that definition. We need to understand what that information tells us. That's important part of chapter 13. Because again, as with the theme was last week, the theme is the same this week and next week. When you all take 330 business finance with Professor Hippler and Professor Abadante or Professor Hassey this summer, 
this is one of the themes of financing is where the cash is going and coming from. And you as a managerial accountant can supply that information to the institution, understanding the comings and goings of cash flow. All right, so I'm saving this and I'll post this little thing to Blackboard later on. Now let's take a look at that problem I was telling you about that was in Blackboard, that Excel spreadsheet. Here it is right here. If you download that spreadsheet, you'll see this. This is a company's financial statement for 2018 and 2019. We're gonna be using this financial statement for the next two weeks. This week, we're gonna use it to explain the statement of cash flow. And next week, we're going to explain question two on this little spreadsheet, financial statement analysis, different ratios and analysis that tell us something about our business in relationship to prior years or in relationship to our competitors. But this week, we're going to concentrate on the statement of cash flow. Notice what I've done here. This is a balance sheet for 2018 and 2019. This is an income statement of this company for 2018 and 2019. We're gonna use this information to help us determine what are the operating cash flows, what are the financing cash flows, and what are the investing cash flows of this organization. Why? Because the bottom line is right here in this number. The difference between cash in 2018 <clears throat> to 2019. $6,718. Where in the hell did that money come from? Did it come from operations? Did it come from investing? Did it come from financing? Where did it come from? Because if I'm running a company, I want to know that answer. It helps me manage my business. And notice I have the deltas or the changes in all these accounts in different colors. If it's a green color, it comes from investing. If it's a red color, it's operations. If it's a purple color, it's investing. Excuse me, financing, excuse me. Purple, financing. Red, operations. Green, investing. And if you look over to the next tab, there's the cash flow statement by taking those deltas and determining where the $6,718 came from. We had negative cash flow in operations. We had positive cash flow in financing. And we had negative cash flow in investing. The sum of those three. $6,718. That's where the cash came and went for this company in 2019. Now, you might say, oh, big deal, Mr. Hassey, $6,718. But it tells a big story about this company. And that's why we're going to go back and take a look at these deltas, because it paints us a picture of the company. You guys want to be good managers and good businessmen and women in the future? Understand the numbers. Understand the numbers. I'm sure some of you at some point in time have bought a used car or will buy a used car or have bought any type of automobile. What do you do when you buy a car? Three things. How much does the friggin' thing cost and how much am I going to have to borrow to buy it? Two, Take it for a test drive. Hey, this feels pretty good. I like this. And three, look underneath the hood. Look at the interior. Look at the details of the automobile and is it made well? Is it clean and efficient? The statement of cash flow is looking under the hood of a company.
Oh, Mr. Hassey, great analogy. Thank you. The statement of cash flow is looking under the hood of a company. In week two of Business 330, next fall, right after Labor Day weekend, you'll be sitting in Landis Hall with Professor Hippler and Professor Abadante, and they're going to go, Anthony, could you please explain to me what the statement of cash flow is for this company that we looked at over the weekend? And Anthony will say, Professor Hippler, Professor Abadante, we're looking under the hood of this company. <gasps> Professor Hippler will, will take a gasp. <gasps> Professor Abadante will just go, praise the Lord. And they'll say, thank God they had Hassey in accounting because you, you'll be ready and understand that prior to walking in to Landis Hall and business finance. Trust me, trust me, it, it's written in the cards. All right, so that's where we stand. We wanna know from the balance sheet and the income statement, what happened to our cash? And these statements tell you, paint you a picture of where the cash is coming. Let's take a look at the cash flow from operations. First of all, net income. Money coming in, $253,584. That's net income. That's money coming in. Another cash flow from operations. Depreciation, $120,000. That's money that we expensed but never wrote a check. That's positive cash flow because we actually made a $357,000 profit, but we had to take out 120,000 of that because we're allowed to by depreciation. That's a positive cash flow. Secondly, look at our accounts receivable. Our accounts receivable went from 632,000 to $878,000. We owe, somebody owes us more money. That's $245,840 of sales we did not collect. Notice on our cash flow statement, that's negative cash flow. When you don't collect the money, that's money you don't have. Negative cash flow. Look at the inventory balance. Inventory went from 1,000,003 to 1,000,007. That's a $429,000 increase. That's money we've paid out, but haven't sold yet. Look at the cash flow statement. Negative cash flow, 429,000. That's money we've sent out and it hasn't come back yet. That's why every weekend you see all those friggin' inventory commercials for grocery stores, JCPenney, Macy's, cars, they want to sell the inventory to collect the cash. If they have inventory, they're not collecting the cash. Look at accounts payable and accruals. These are operating cash flows. Look at our accounts payable went from 324,000 to $360,000. That's an increase of $35,800. That's money we didn't have to pay out yet. We haven't paid those bills yet. Look at the increase in liability is an increase in cash flow. Huh? You borrow more money and it's a cash flow coming in? Yes. It means you haven't paid it out yet. You've received those services without paying anything. It's cash flow. Increase in liabilities is an increase to cash flow. A decrease in assets, excuse me, an increase to assets is a decrease in cash flow. Hmm, interesting. An increase in assets is a decrease in cash flow. We bought the asset, we, somebody owes us the money, we bought the inventory and we haven't collected any money. We borrowed money in accounts payable. We haven't paid it back yet. That's increased cash flow. So you combine all those, net income, 
depreciation, negative cash flow from receivables, negative cash flows from inventory, accounts payable and accruals, which is another form of accounts payable. Total all those up, our operations lost 170,000 bucks. Even though we made in profit, accounting profit 253, our cash flow from operations was negative. Why? More people owe us money and we have a higher inventory. Let's look at the financing side of the house, purple. Financing is the borrowing of money, the issuing of stock and the paying of dividends. Look at here, notes payable. Notes payable is the current portion of interest bearing loans. Financing is interest bearing loans. Accounts payable and accruals are not interest bearing. You just have to pay them back. The notes payable went from 720,000 to 300,000. It decreased by $420,000. We paid off some of that loan. Look at long-term bonds. Went from a million to 500,000. We paid off a half a million dollars of that loan. And look at common stock. It went from 460 to 1.7 million. We issued more stock and got the cash. How did we know we issued more stock? Look up here. That last year we had 100,000 shares of stock outstanding. This year we have 250,000 shares of stock outstanding. We issued more stock. And what did we do to the shareholders of that stock? We paid out a $55,000 dividend. 22 cents a share times 250,000 shares, we paid out a $55,000 dividend. So if we look at our cash flow statement from financing, notice negative cash flow, we paid off some of that note. Negative cash flow, we paid off that bond. Cash coming in by issuing the stock. And we paid out a dividend of $55,000. Add all those up, we had a positive cash flow of $245,936. We spent a, almost a million dollars in cash going out to pay off debt, but we brought in a little bit over a million dollars in issuing new stock. And then we get to the investments, the green numbers. The investments, money going out for investment purposes. Short-term investments increased. Assets increased. Negative cash flow. We spent 51,632 on additional short-term investments. Maybe we bought some money market funds or whatever. And look at fixed assets. Fixed assets went from 1 million two to 1 million 220. A $17,050 increase. That means we purchased more fixed assets. And look at our cash flow statement. Investing, negative cash flow. Investing, fixed assets. 68,682. So we had negative cash flow in operations. We had positive cash flow thanks to selling the stock in financing. And we had negative cash flow in investing. Ladies and gentlemen, madame and messieurs, add them all up. $6,718. That's where our cash came from. And to investors, it says, why? Oh, that's nice. They made a profit. But what the hell are they having such a high receivable and inventory balance? That's a little bit inefficient. And what the hell are they issuing all this common stock? And instead of purchasing additional fixed assets to generate revenue, they're paying off old debt. Your profits should be used to pay back old debt, not new money. New money should be invested in creating new revenue streams. That's a problem. But this is, you'll talk all about this in business finance. 
here in managerial accounting, we're putting the numbers together to tell the finance people what's up. Operating cash flow, financing cash flow, investing cash flow. This is how those numbers came to be from the financials of the, op of the company. Your job, should you desire to do so, and we'll practice this on Wednesday, is to be able to put together one of these suckers to put together a statement of cash flows. Yes, Anthony, close your mouth. Yes, Anthony, you are going to be putting this together. But here's the good thing about this, and Professor Hassey's being out, up in front about this, and you'll see this in your final examination review on Wednesday, the sheet I give you. You're not going to have to put together the entire statement of cash flows. I'm going to say, all right, tell me what the operating cash flow is for this company. That will be one question. That's it. You won't have to put together the whole thing. I'm just going to ask you to put together one segment of the cash flow statement. Oh, what is the financing from the cash flow of this company? What is the investing? You're just gonna have to do one, but you're gonna have to know what they mean in order to do that. Thank you very much. That's what you'll need to do for the examination next week. Hard? Maybe. Can you do it? Yes, here's a template. Study the friggin' thing. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So again, this is in week 14 of your Blackboard. Strongly urge you to download this and use it as a study guide and lose, use it to look at some of the questions from your final exam review that I'll give you on Wednesday. You can do this, but you're just going to have to do one section, not the entire statement. You can do that in Abadante and Hippler's class next fall. You're just gonna do one side of it today, all right? Next week, we're gonna talk about the third tab on this spreadsheet, the statement analysis. You're gonna be responsible for knowing these financial terms, but we'll talk about that next Monday. This week, we're concentrating on this. All right. I think that's enough for today. We'll take a look at these problems. Mason, don't be so excited when I call off the end of the class. All right, just take it easy, will you? All right, so that's what we'll do. One of my coaches at 11, so. Your what's is at 11? A meeting with one of my coaches, so it's, it's good. Uh, Come in. Coach Delaney. Oh, Delaney. yeah. He's one of the football coaches. Yeah, so what position do you play? Uh, wide receiver, long snapper. I played golf last Friday with Coach Creek, and he cheated. So just so you know that, your head coach cheats at golf. So anything, well, I'll, you know. I'll keep in mind. I'll, I'll, I'll you, and you can, you can point that out to him if you see him. Say, you know, uh, Coach, <laughs> Professor Hassey says you cheat on the golf course. See what he says to that. I'd like to hear the comment that what he <laughs> will say to that. Because I played golf with him last Friday at Los Serranos in Chino Hills, and he cheated. How is that? I, I want no part of that guy anymore. So that's the end of that. Okay. All right, so we'll move on after I've just given some information that I probably shouldn't have, but that's okay. All right. All right, guys, uh, let me make sure I have everybody. Fausto came, I didn't have him originally. Thank you, Fausto. Seth came, I hope he's now enjoying his sausages. He does it not showing himself, so he probably is. Uh, Miss Keywall is here, good. Uh, Mr. Richard is here. Good, good to see you, John. And I think I have everybody else. So uh, that's our topic for this week, the statement of cash flow. Please review that. We'll look at some more problems on uh, Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, you'll get your final examination review and your grades from quiz number three. A picture of what's to come as far as a little bit more difficulty in the questions that you'll be receiving in the future of these last week or so of our class. Anybody have any questions or issues that you need to discuss with me? Do so now, please.
Mr. Littlejohn, I have not heard from you in weeks. Could you please open up your mic and let me know that you are still alive? Jake. Hassey, what's going on? The name is Mr. Hassey to you, but thank you. Everything is fine, Jake. All is well. I, again, as I just said, I played golf at Los Serenos last Friday with a cheater, but the course was in beautiful shape. I'm hope you're getting, I hope you're getting out and playing a little bit now. Jake. See, now he's gone again. See, he does this to think he's going to get a class participation grade, but now he's not even around. Seth, one last question for you. How was the sausages? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They were good. Do you have the sausages? They're great. <laughs> I would give you some. I would give you some, but. No, Seth, you're a growing boy, and I, I hope you excuse. Were you around when I made that comment about our men's basketball team earlier? No, I, I, I don't think I hear, heard it. All right, good. That's good. So I, <laughs> That's good. But I hear you got some good recruits coming in. You're coming back. We're going to be in good shape, correct? Yes. Who just logged off? I just saw, you know, you, know, you guys, can't you stick with me for a little bit? All right, guys, that's it. Any, any more questions? Cerise, have you decided to change majors? Yes, it will be like econ. You are a traitor. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Thank you very much. All right, guys, have a great rest of the week. Study hard. Just another two weeks to go and you're out of here. So you've done great. So I'll see you all on Wednesday. Adios. Mr. See you, Mr. Mason, good luck with your coach. And, Cree and Coach Creek cheats. See you, Professor. Take care. See you, guys. See you, Zinya. Do you, I do have you. one thing to show you. I, I made a painting for my mother for Mother's Day. You made a what? A painting. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just um yeah. That's so. very nice. So you're very artistic, Mason. Yeah, I, I made all of these. What's the deal with the Arizona State shirt? Oh, my sister goes to ASU. Or Does she like it? ASU. Yeah, she she graduated already. Oh, good for her. Mm -hmm. all, right. Yeah. all right. Yeah, that's very nice. I didn't know you were an artiste. Uh, just something I've picked up recently. Did you do those things behind you on the wall? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they cover my room. They're yeah. everywhere. Very nice. Good job. Thank you. I have no artistic ability, so uh, <laughs> I admire anybody who can do that stuff. Okay. You're good at teaching. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right, Mason. We'll see you later. I'll see you later. Chris, you still on? Mr. Oliveros. Chris. All right, guys. Adios.